in fact i'm going to 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 make a separate video talking about devolution of federalism for you guys to understand better because a, a city like kampala collects its taxes after collecting the taxes it takes it to the central government after taking it to the central government if it has any problem it goes to the central government to beg for some funding okay you cannot tell me that you can develop a city in that process what could have been done is a city must collect some taxes retain some even if it has some problem it doesn't need to go to the exchequer to ask for money it can use this money it has been collecting but all districts all cities like jinja collect money send it to the exchequer and then if they want they have a problem like for example city of jinja if a city of jinja or the city from barara or or, or barara city or arua city has a problem it comes to kampala in parliament to ask for funding yet it has yet it can collect some money from within the city this nonsense must stop it must stop hello everyone how was your day hope you had a very good day you can tell me where you are watching your, this video from by commenting on it i also thank you for the continued support and advice and the feedback you always give me i don't take your support for granted today the first son mohozka in rugaba had some meeting with the executive director of kampala and they they, delib they deliberated on a lot of things kampala was try was transferred to the central government it is being headed by the government that's why it has the exact the executive director and the minister at the helm last month there was a, a, an exhibition led by one and only spire which was aimed at ex 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 exhibiting potholes around kampala truth be said there are many potholes in kampala in fact there is no road which is pothole free around kampala after that exhibition the ministry and other concerned leaders came out and 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 started talking about the and they started talking about the potholes as if they were not ex existing remember all big wigs from parliament from the executive even the president himself uses these roads with potholes but it took a person a private individual to make a statement on twitter and they also they all came out came out to talk about the same the KCC went on to do a, a com, to form a committee which is aimed at overseeing the the construction of these roads and 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 also solving the pothole issues so today i want to look at the reason why the first son mozika nirugaba engaged the executive director first of all the executive director is picked by the president that means by the extension is picked by the first family first of all i think mozika nirugaba is trying to tap into the politics of kampala because kampala has almost 90% opposition elected leaders so these potholes have had a lot of politics they've had a lot of talkability so, and i think mohoz is trying to capitalize on this so that he can also gain some political influence we remember when he was going to get uh, his rank as the general he passed through kampala and he thought he, he could pull so much crowds okay which never came to pass okay and to add on that this Moj, uh, uh, Moj project has gone around the uh, the country but it has failed to gain momentum but i think even the person who advised him advised him wrongly because if i were mohozi what i could do i would, could meet the committee which was formed not the executive director because by meeting the committee where you, who, which was formed by by a large extent you are meeting the elected leaders the mps you are meeting the mayors and by the way kampala has one one uh, nrm mayor so you are meeting uh, elected by doing so he would be me he would be meeting elected leaders
you cannot tell me that mohoz who uses these these roads each and every day plus the executive they are coming out now after the the Kampala residents crying for almost a month okay the budget of Kampala when Jemvini Famsu was around was close to a billion right now Kampala is getting i think 400 and something billion less than 500 billion a, a, a city which collects almost 75 if not 80 percent of the revenue generated by the whole country should be getting at least, even if it gets at least two percent okay Kampala must have something like 1.5 trillion budget okay it must not be less than 1.5 trillion budget this is our city this is our face okay and for us who who, who drive these small cars because of these small issues okay what surprises me wh what surprises me more is State House as an entity has a bigger budget than that of Kampala. It has that has never been seen anywhere around the world. There is no country which has a budget in which the State House is more spent on than the capital city. The motive of Mohozka in Erugaba is to engage in politics. It is politics. Okay, this is politics, because he has never met. He has never met uh, 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 the Kampala leadership anywhere to solve issues, until when they were raised on social media, until when people came out to cry about the suffering they get when using these roads. So he is planning to enter Kampala politics, okay, but not to solve the issues, because such people who are near the president. Such uh, such people who are near the president, because Moshe Kenyugaba can access his father, even in his bedroom, formally and informally. If indeed he means it, he could source more funding. Kampala funding has been slashed. There there must be adequate funding for our camp, uh, capital city. But also, I'm I'm starting to think that we we must get the Kenyan way. The Kenyan way. Each, each, each city, each district has a threshold it must get from the central government. It must get from the central government. Okay, But under our current setting, the funding is based on the, on the, on the, on the, on the president's feel. He can give any amount he deems fit. He can give out any amount he deems fit. So it must be in our in our constitution. We must commit a certain percentage of our revenue to different cities. Kenya set out a law to put 25% of its collected revenue to go in the cities. 25% of its collected revenue must go back to the cities. I think we must start to think about this. Okay. We must put a threshold of our revenue to go back in the cities so that we don't uh, 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 just live on the mercy of the president. Because if the president decides to give you 400 billion, he'll give you 400 billion. If the president try, uh, decides to, gi to give you more, he'll give you more. Okay? We must go in devolution and to a larger extent, we must do a federal state. In, okay? Before Kampala was taken back to. to to, to the executive, Kampala used to collect its own own source revenue for proper management. But even the, the revenue which is collected by KCCA is put in the exchequer, it's being controlled by government. In fact, KCCA doesn't, da, doesn't have its own source revenue. The money, every money that is collected by KCCA is put in the exchequer. And after a period of time, they go to, to, to beg, to kneel down in parliament to get some funding. Can you imagine? So, we must start thinking about devolution. We must start thinking about uh, 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 federalism. That is the only way to, to tackle the imbalance in development, but also the, the inadequate funds which are always put in our Kampala city. In fact, I'm going to, to, to make a separate video talking about devolution of federalism for you guys to understand better because a, a city like Kampala 
collects its taxes. After collecting the taxes, it takes it to the central government. After taking it to the central government, if it has any problem, it goes to the central government to beg for some funding. Okay? You cannot tell me that you can develop a city in that process. What could have been done is a city must collect some taxes, retain some. Even if it has some problem, it doesn't need to go to the exchequer to ask for money. It can use this money it has been collecting. But all districts, all cities like Jinja, collect money, send it to the exchequer. And then if they, want, they have a problem, like for example, a city of Jinja, if a city of Jinja or the city from Barara or, or, or Barara city, or Arua city has a problem, it comes to Kampala in parliament to ask for funding. Yet it, has, it, yet it can collect some money from within the city. This nonsense must stop. It must stop. Thank you very much for listening in. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, I implore you to subscribe, like, and comment so that I can be motivated to do more of such videos. Peace.